C6 plus E6. This is 1500 plus 44, 1544. What's the formula used? C7 plus E7. So on and so forth. Okay. So, yeah. So that is about the functions that we learned yesterday, a recap of it, as well as a new concept which we understood just now, that is the difference between relative referencing and absolute referencing. Each of them have their own benefits. Okay. So with this, we will move on to the next section, which is understanding the if statements. Okay. If it comes under logical statements, it is a logical statement. It basically tests a condition and when the condition is true, it will return certain thing, certain value. And when the condition is false, it will return some other value. So when we simply type in if and we open the bracket, look at the arguments that it is expecting. Look at the syntax. So the logical test. Okay, first argument that we have to give is the logical test. And depending on that test, if it is true, if the test is true, then what value has to be used or what has to be done would be the second argument. And in case the condition or the test that we perform here fails, then what is supposed to be done? If it is false, then what is it that we are supposed to do? Okay, so it is a logical statement. Now, there are many uh, other variants in if. We have simple if statement. We can use nested ifs. We can use something called as IFS. Now, if you would like to check whether on the version of Excel that you are using, whether it supports uh, IFS. IFS is a relatively new function. So though, uh, if any of you is using very old versions of Excel like 2013 or 2010, 2007, something like that, you might not find it. Anyway, a quick way in which you can check whether or not this feature is available on the version of Excel that you are using is you could simply go to the formulas tool menu, okay, over there. And under logical, it is a logical expression. So just go to logical and you can check from here. I have IFS. Okay, you can check from here whether or not you people have IFS. If it is there, you can use it. If it is not there, also no problem. You can continue using nested ifs. Okay. So what is it? It is a logical statement which tests a certain condition. If the condition is true, it will do something. If the condition is false, it will do something else. We can specify both. What has to be done when the condition is met? And what has to be done when the condition is not met. So here today we are going to explore all these logical expressions which are available. Now here is a data source where we have names of employees and their salary as well as their job rating. So be, let's say this is based on their annual performance. Whenever there is an annual compensation review that happens, depending on the performance of the employees, the organization would give them ratings. Let's say five means it is the best, okay, best performance. And um, one means that employee has not performed well at all. The least performing employee is given one, okay? How are we, how are we rating them? Five means the best performance and one is the lowest performance, the least performance from an, empl from an employee, okay? Salary is numerical, yes. Salary is basically currency. Okay, salary is currency. So it has been formatted as you can notice. If you go back to the home ribbon, right? This is salary and uh, it has been customized. But even if I just leave it as currency, it will work. But my system, again, by default, uh, it is India. So it's showing the rupee symbol. I formatted it to be compatible with US. The currency symbol I will take is US dollar. Okay, so this is numerical. Now you can notice that uh, we have some numbers, decimal places are here. To remove the decimal places, we can simply click on this icon, which will reduce the decimal places. Okay, this is numerical. Okay, this, this we can say that it is a number. 
It contains numerical data. Again, we don't need to give any decimals. Here, this is the accounting or the currency value, and this is general, general meaning text. Okay, now we are supposed to give bonus to the employees. I said rating five means best, and and uh, the worst performance or the least performance will given a rating of one. Okay, now. How do we give the bonus depending on the salary that they have made? I'm supposed to compute the bonus, but it should be depending on the salary made by the employees. Uh, I'm sorry, not salary made. I have to give them a bonus depending on their job rating. Okay, the depending on the job rating. And the final take-home salary would be the salary plus whatever bonus they receive. Together will be their final. So we can do it based on if condition. I will keep showing you step by step how to use if here. If, uh, sorry, equal to if. The moment I select it, you can see the function has come. And what is the logical test? It's asking me what is the logical test. I would like to check the value in the job rating column, this one. For each person, the rating is given. So for first employee, it is C2. If it is equal to 5, okay? If the job rating, which is in cell C2, is equal to 5, now, this is my logical test. I want to check whether it is equal to 5. And if it is true, what to do? Let's give a bonus of 5,000. And if it is false, 0. Meaning what? What is the statement going to do? Only when the job rating is 5, only to those employees who obtained a job rating of 5, we are giving them a bonus of 5,000. Everybody else is going to receive 0. No bonus. Now, look at this. There is no value here. Why? Because this over here, this employee's job rating is 1. But I need to do it for all the employees, right? So what to do? Simply, I will double click on the handle here and it will copy the formula down. So only where the job rating is 5, bonus has been given to the employee. The rest of them are not given any bonus at all. That is what it is showing us. Okay. Now, let's say uh, this is not very fair, right? Only if they get job rating 5, they get bonus. Otherwise, no bonus. It's not doesn't seem very fair. So what I will do is, let us give everybody. Okay. Let us give everybody um, some bonus or the other. Now, how, do we, how to do that? We can use something called as nested if. It is basically multiple if statements. If inside an if. Okay, if inside an if, nested if. So what will happen? How do we write that? If C2 equal to 5, then I'll give 5,000. That is pretty much clear, which is my true condition. But under the false condition, we will write one more if statement. Okay, because there's another condition to test. I will again say if, again the logical test. What is the logical test? If the value here is equal to 4, then uh, let's give a bonus of 3000. Okay, comma. What if that is also false? What if the job rating is not 5 and not 4? Then another if. I'm going to check if the job rating that is there in this column is equal to 3. Then let's give them a bonus of 1500. That is, if it is equal to C uh, 3, then what we'll do? We'll give them a bonus of 1500, comma. What about the false condition? Another if, if C2, um, so I'll just copy this, I'll click here. Okay, if C2 is equal to two. Okay, if it is equal to two, then I would like to give a bonus of a uh, thousand rupees, comma. What if that is also false? We'll just make it zero. Means what? If they're getting a job rating of one, then we are going to give zero as the bonus. And then one thing that we have to remember here is we have to close as many brackets as we open. It is mandatory to close as many brackets as we open. 
So here I have opened one, two, three, four brackets. So I'll have to close four. Now when I hit enter, what happened? The formula got applied. What is the job rating of this person? It is one. Therefore, that person did not receive any bonus. We are not giving any bonus for one, right? It is zero. Now, if I just copy down this formula, you can notice how it has populated the values. So wherever, whoever has a job rating of four, okay, whoever has a job rating of four, we said we will give a bonus of 3000, which happened here. Whoever has a job rating of five, the bonus is 5000, which is our first condition. Three, they're getting 1500. And uh, job rating two, they're getting a thousand. Okay, over here. And wherever job rating is one, the last condition zero. Okay, this is nested if statements, how we can test multiple conditions using the nested if statements. However, this can be a little cumbersome. And uh, here I had just four conditions to check for. Imagine if you had a lot of such conditions, then it would get pretty compl complicated. It would get a little cumbersome. So what other option do we have? In the latest versions of Excel, there is another function called as IFS. Okay. IFS is a slightly more, uh, let's say, refined way of testing multiple conditions. Okay, it is a more concise uh, way of testing multiple conditions. But as I told you, this feature may not be there in very old versions like 2010 and 2007 and all. You have to check. How will you check whether or not it's available? As I told you, you can either go to formulas and check under the logical um, you know, section whether or not it is present. The other option is just type it equal to if and just check whether or not it's there if you find it in the list it means on the version of excel that you are using this function is available if you do not find it it means it's not available if it's not available then you have to go ahead and keep using the nested if there is no other work around there um, so now there is one more thing that i would like to change here in this formula if you notice the values be it five thousand or be it 3000, be it 1500, be it 1000, they are all hard coded, isn't it? There's a lot of hard coding that has happened over here. Now, rather than hard coding, we will put these uh, bonus values in a separate table, okay, and reference it so that we can avoid the hard coding. Because if I have to change the bonus, let's say when they are getting, uh, when the job rating is five, the bonus has to be increased to 10,000. Then at every point, I'll have to go and change it or I'll have to change it here, right? So instead, what I will do is here, I'll bring it here. So there, let's say I have one table where the performance rating and what should be the bonus given to the employees based on their performance is stored separately. Yeah, yeah. So that is exactly what we are doing now here, Priya Darshini, right? Uh, yeah, that is exactly what we are doing here. So we're going to create another table, as you can see, where we have the performance rating. And we will refer to these values in our formula rather than hard coding them. How did I bring space between dollar and the numerical, the numericals? That is the default. Okay, it happens by default. The moment you use the currency, as your data type currency. And if you use um, US currency, it, ha it happens automatically. If you use Indian currency, then you can see the rupee symbol is close to the number, right? But if it is US, then there will be a space between the dollar sign and the value. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to change my formula now. I don't, I'll just delete this whole thing, okay? This is not what I'm going to do. No hard coding anymore nested ifs itself, but here by referencing to another column. Okay, so equal to if, if the value in this particular column is equal to five, that's my condition, I want to check whether it is five, 
If it is five, if it is true, then I need to give a bonus, which is here. Okay. <clears throat> now, if it is false, then what to do? And what about this? Should this be relative referencing or should it be absolute referencing? If I leave it as G3, it becomes relative referencing. And next time when I move on to the next row, if I copy the formula down, when it's referencing the second row, this will also move down. So as this reference moves down, this reference also would move down and we might get incorrect output. So for now, I will leave it as relative referencing. Okay, let's leave it as G3 only, comma. And what about if it is false? We have another condition to test. We have another condition to test where we will check whether C2 is equal to four. If yes, then I'm going to reference this cell to, uh, to obtain the bonus. And uh, again, another condition to check if the value in C2 is equal to three, okay, then I'm going to reference this cell for getting the bonus. Again, if the value in, in this cell is equal to two, then I'm going to reference to this particular cell to obtain the bonus, okay? And here, um, I will leave it as zero for everything else. For everything else, let's reference this cell, okay? For everything else means for one, if it's not five, not four, not three, not two, for one, we're referencing this cell. And remember to close as many brackets that have been opened. Four brackets have been opened. So four of them will get closed. Enter. This person uh, is job role, uh, job rating one. So obviously the bonus is not there. Now, if I copy this formula down, it will work to some extent, but it does not work beyond that. Right? It went wrong. Why did it go wrong? Because look at the formula now. Look at the formula that Tableau has used for this cell. It is referencing G4, G5, G6, G7. What about the previous case? We started the referencing from G3, right? We were referencing G3 for uh, job role equal to for performance rating five. We, we referenced G3, but when I moved to the next, it is referencing G4. And when I further move down, when I come here, it's referencing G9. We don't have data there. It's referencing these five cells in the formula. So because of relative referencing, which is the default referencing, okay, we uh, this problem has happened. So what are we supposed to do? I am supposed to use absolute referencing. Whenever the performance rating is five, I should always refer to this one particular cell. I need to lock that cell in place. Okay, I need to lock that cell in place. So I will go to G3. When C2 equal to 5, if job rating in the job rating column is 5, then I should always reference to this particular cell. Lock it in place. How? Just F4 key. So I will go there and press down F4 function key. I am locking the performance, uh, the bonus cells in place. Okay. I'm going to lock.